Right, so here we have the regulations made by Secretary of State the day before Parliament under Section 45R of the Public Health. So this under, this is under, this stands under, yeah, Public Health Act. So this power, this statutory instrument is only granted power from its parent act under section 45R. So this is the key thing. This is where the run around things that this is this is all it is, a big fucking merry go round, yeah? Get ready for the ride because it's long, but it's not filled with fields, it's quite boring. But I'll try and skip a lot of the bullshit already that they fill in gaps. The legalese they just like to fucking yeah. it is just like oh you want to see. So here we have the health protections, coronavirus restrictions, England regulations 2020, which I've stamped ultra virus. They're very uh yeah that's my stamp there basically that's what I think of that. Um the Secretary State makes the following regulations in exercise in exercise of the powers conferred by section 45C and here is I've underlined it all the basically all the sections which supposedly grant these powers then yeah, or confer these powers. So this is the Public Health Act 1984. Would you believe it? Would you Adam and Eve it? I was surprised but at the same time I weren't at all. I was like, George, oh well, you fucking G, you got it right, didn't you? 1984, he, he fucking knew. He knew, mate. About 1980, apparently, this is known as the 1984 Act. Yeah? And this is what they've used to bring in this end of the game. You know, on the grand chessboard, this is their final hour. Whichever way it goes, we're still finding out. But this is their. So called, as Brzezinski says, you know, the end game. So, and it has all been brought about through this 1984 act, which was in 1984, so you did get that right. George Orwell, in love. Um, so, yeah, these regulations are made in response to the serious new effect to public health, which is posed by the incidents and spread of severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2 SARS in England. So here we have a fraudulent thing. So what date is this? Made in March. Made uh, made on the 26th of March at 1 p.m. Oh, if I can put that together quick. Uh, late before Parliament, and then come into force. So we've been. I don't know, it came into force before it went before Parliament. That's interesting, isn't it? So 1 pm 26, it was made and put and come into force. And then an hour and a half later, it was late before Parliament. Um, so it takes it to March 2020. So let's, let's just uh, quickly have a look at. It will be listed as a high consequence infectious disease. There is a list of these viruses which would deem a public health emergency to which these powers are meant to be granted for them specific types of emergencies. Yeah, this isn't like 
basically, if, if it was so dangerous, it would be on here, on this list. Which it was, initially. When they first, when they first come on the scene, when they were first bringing that, talking about it, they was put on there. Yeah, because so they didn't know nothing about it. But, here we have. That's as of COVID-19. Let's have a look, see here. Yeah? As of the 19th of March. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting, interesting. 19th of March, it says. What was the date of the issue of uh, which day, wasn't it? 26th of March, was it? What was the date there? Hmm, 19th of March. Oh, yeah, March 26th of March, and we got so this was issued um, 26th of March. Oh, so exactly one week after, exactly one week after it was declared. It was declared on a, as of 19th of March. COVID-19 is no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease in the UK. So here we have it. And in a nutshell, that is it. That is it. That is the fraud right there. Which is the case by Lebanese's dealing with, and hopefully he'll have justice with that. It's looking good. We'll just find out. But that's his. That's his battle in court, you know. And. Uh, Hopefully I can take mine further in my situation, but this one here, 19th of March, is no longer considered to be high consequence in pictures disease in the UK. So then a week later they declared it an emergency. So they knew, they had a whole week's notice of it. And yes, no, no, all, all, all the science was in, they've, they've gathered the data on it and they've determined it's not dangerous actually. Here we have, Four Nations Public Health, HCID Group, made an interim recommendations in January 2020 to classify COVID-19 as a HCID. So initially it was past that in January 2020. Yeah. This is based on consideration of the UK HCID criteria about the virus and the disease with information available during the early stages of the outbreak. Now that more is known about COVID-19, the public health bodies in the UK have reviewed the most up-to-date information about COVID-19 against the UK HCID criteria. So there's a list, this is to be declared an actual emergency to where they can bring in such draconian, tyrannical powers. Which, if there was the Black Death out there, then fuck, I can understand then. Yeah, if they were quarantining people that had the Black Death, I'd, I'd be like, fair enough, you know? Maybe that guy shouldn't be going around to door to door. But really, I mean, you gotta wonder, you gotta wonder about any of these pandemics if they really like, but, but, but who knows really? The Spanish flu, I don't think that they made that up just like this one, mate. I mean, they've written about this as if it was so bad and so, oh, it's cute, oh, we've ravaged the land. People believe it now, so of course the next generation, 100 years from now, is gonna believe it. So when we hear about the Spanish flu, we assume that that one's legitimate, but I don't think that was. You know, they made them more masked then. Yeah, I found that interesting. They made it illegal to spit on the floor. Yeah, and they made businesses shut. Yeah, they had everyone wearing masks. So, this is the same thing. And you know, they had the Great Depression then. You know, everyone was made not to work and they had all these problems. And there was a lot of shit which we're still we're going to be living through soon. So I think it's the same thing, really. So there we go. There's the details of that. So I'll put them in the show notes. So yeah, you can read the rest of that. But that's the key bit. I'll leave it there because it's as long as I was. But yeah, look, they've got these are listed as HCID. And they're like through contact and airborne, yeah? They've got, you know, MERS, H1N1, whatever it is, H1N1. All these different, all these, but that's bird flu, which apparently humans can't really get anyway. Apparently a lot of the shit, you can only get it if you're injected with it. It's not, uh, yeah, the, what they're trying to do, this, uh, it, it can't, that nature doesn't do these things. This is humans doing this, yeah? Apparently there's no way you can get an animal virus in your in your system. It just wouldn't happen. 
Yeah. Anyway, they yeah. do. They can do that. Anyway, that, that would happen is if they were injecting it in you, which they, is what they do. That's what this shit is. They inject you with it so it produces the same markers, yeah. Or whatever it is, the science. So you ask the scientists, yeah. This is their. This is their words. They, they, they know the details. Claim to love the science, but then you don't. No one bothers to fucking look at it. The ones that sort of champion it. Don't even look at it themselves, do they? So also here we have these. This is just the uh, basically to be a police officer, you know, and uh, attestation. This is the word. I had to look up how to say that. But yeah, when we say the word oath, that's what the word I was always using. You know, you warrant card. Once you see warrant card, you know you're under oath for what you want to ask. You know, are you under? Do you, have you made your attestation? This is the word. Because then they really know you know. Because this is their declaration, their attestation. Um, so the position and title of the constable has important and historical legal status. Police constables are servants. See, again, this is the facts. And they don't like when you point that out. Every time I've said you're a public servant, they, they, the police officers really hate that. They're like, no, I'm not a servant. I'm not your servant. Yes, you are. Here it says, these constables are servants of the Crown Sovereign and are strictly independent of Her Majesty's government. Whilst performing their role, they are considered in law to be special legal entities who are responsible for their actions in carrying out police duties. They are responsible for their actions when carrying out police duties. They are not employees of police forces and cannot take industrial action. See Police Act 1919. It would be unlawful, for example, for any member of government, such as the Prime Minister or Home Secretary, to attempt to control, coerce, direct, or command constables of any rank. Do you understand what this is saying? Because they don't. But that's why she wants to. If they're supposedly a fucking constable. Oh, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's what the, don't, don't talk to me, talk to trees in May. They're not meant, that's what the one said to me one time when I'm recording. But it's like, oh, uh, hang on a minute, you're not meant to be answering to the Prime Minister. You never were. You're meant to be upholding the law of the land. So, that's clearly stated there. And here we have the territorial police constable. 43 territorial police forces in England and Wales are responsible for general policing. Members of the police service are attested under section 29 of the Police Act 1996. This oath is also taken by members of the British Transport Police, Ministry of Defence Police. The prescribed form of words is that given by schedule 4 of the Act, inserted by section 83 of the Police Reform Act 2002 as follows. In English, in England, uh, I blah, 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 oh, blah, 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 do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve the Queen in the office of Constable with fairness, integrity, diligence and impartiality, upholding fundamental human rights. Do you hear? Upholding fundamental human rights and according equal respect to all people and that I will to the best of my power cause the peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property and that while I continue to hold the said office I will do my the best of my skill and knowledge I will to the best of my skill and knowledge discharge all the duties thereof Faithfully according to law. So they're sworn to uphold human rights, which are inalienable. But then they say, oh, they're, they're not legitimate rights. What are they on about? Oh, that's not a legitimate right, that one. That's what they say. Oh, that's an illegitimate one. There's legitimate rights and illegitimate rights. You know, a, a right can't be illegitimate. What the fuck are they on? What are they smoking? Oh, that's on. Sounds trippy. 
Cause uh, I don't know what they're on, mate. But it sounds like a good fucking trip. Illegitimate rights. As Carl said, and other people says, yeah. A right isn't a right if it can be taken away. That's a privilege. So when they're trying to say that's the illegitimate right, they're trying to say that. Well, basically, that's them trying to say that. Oh, you don't have that right. But they, that's not. They can't take that away. All power that they have is drawn. Is even the crown. Yeah. The crown has to honour the people's rights. That was in the Magna Carta because it was that's what it come down to. And as soon as the people are, are you know, that, that agreement that's made, as soon as that's been broken, and all the government, all, all everyone involved, all these people, yeah, they don't have no power. They, they, they all basically, they have to uphold our end of the fucking deal. We have them to be granted any power, and that's why any conflicting legislation with your rights, your rights will always. Be the highest authority. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it short because I love it. Peace out. Oh no, one second, you didn't do the other bit. Where we go? 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 Yeah. So here we have 1215. They seem to be hidden on .gov.uk. Yeah, they don't like you seeing the original. This is what they've done, yeah? Bit by bit. They've just tried it. They think they have anyway. That's what they try to do. If you read through it, it's a joke, mate. Then it's all like, it's all just Section this is dot dot dot. Section this is dot dot dot. Because obviously, uh, you know, they've had a. Uh, what do they call it? Amendments, or whatever they call it. Or they've. Uh, but this is the original here. 1215. And this is the one that is and always has been in place. By the grace of God, King of England. Lord of Ireland, Duke of Normandy, and Aquitaine, and blah 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 blah. Bishops, abbots, earls, barons, justices, foresters, sheriffs, stewards, servants, and to all his officials and loyal subjects, greeting. So that's everyone included. Know that before God, for the health of our soul and those of our ancestors and heirs, to the honour of God, for the exaltation of of the Holy Church and the better orderings of our kingdom at the advice of our Reverend Father Stephen uh, blah, 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 blah. first that we have granted to God and by this present present to our heart have confirmed for us and our heirs in perpetuity that the English Church shall be free and shall have its right undiminished and its liberties unimpaired that we wish this so to be observed appears from the fact that of our own free will before the outbreak of the present dispute between us and our bands we granted and confirmed by child the freedom of the church's election the right reckon to be of the greatest necessity and important said so it and caused this to be confirmed by I'm not going to say Here we have Article 61. This is where, and people, you bring a man the car, they try to, oh, that's what oldie talk, it doesn't try now. Yes, it does. Article 61, lawful rebellion. Yeah? When tyranny becomes law, resistance becomes duty. Is one of the sayings, as it goes. Yeah? So we all have a, it's on us, we have a responsibility to resist. Not only is it wrong what they're doing, we, you know, if we had any fucking morals and integrity, any autonomy, you know, to, of our own moral compass, we'd fucking stand our ground on just by fucking in reflex. I do. Oh no, yeah, I know, but if we just do what they say, then we'll, you know, you what, you what, you just do what they say, then what? You would then what they say, then? You've already given up then. People are so thick, aren't they? Let's just. It's shit, man. It's fucking stupid. It's on this. It is on this.
It is on fucking the house here. Anyway, here we have out oh, 61. 61. So you have to basically, you won't find this on dog.uk, but it is the only man car that they ever need the, and nothing can ever take that away. Yeah, but I, it's the, the, the Michael of Benicia, his point forward Manor Car 2020, I stand by that because I think, you know, that would make sense to, you know, reaffirm it. But really, that's not really going to change anything. That's just because people would act as if this one doesn't exist anymore, as if, we, oh, yeah, that's old, that's olden days. But it's been an ongoing battle. They've been trying to pick it apart, but every time the Manor Car has always come on top, and it always will. As long as the judges are doing their job. Because it can't be overturned. It says in it, any conflicting legislation brought in by government, Magna Carta will always be on top. That's why it's the Great Charter. And this is what all, you know, every other like, system is, in other countries is based on as well. Anyway, since we have, it says here, Article 61. The only one you need to remember for times like these. Article 61. Manica, 12.15, 12.15, make sure it's 12.15. If you get read the one on .gov.uk, it's all empty. It's just, you know, section one, dot, dot, dot. Section two, dot, dot, dot. Section three, dot, dot, dot. Amendment made, blah, blah, blah. Section five, dot, dot, dot. What is all this? Can't just take yeah. out the fucking wrong section. Yeah. Just say, oh, we, oh, we've amended that. No, 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 we changed that bit in, in uh, 1864. We amended that bit. Oh, in uh, 1943, we amended this bit. Or blah blah blah. You know, that's the way it is. You read it. It's a joke. And it's just it's, it's, they, they can't do that. The van der car cannot be unwritten. Any legislation that says it is, that's just, uh, uh, stands under the Mena Carta, so it doesn't have that authority to do that. Might undermine it. It draws its power from it. No, it don't, it's not, it don't, it don't, it's not every round. Anyway, it's Article 61. Since we have granted all these things for God, for the better orderings of our kingdom, and to all that, all lay, and to allay the discord, has arisen between us and our barons because it was about to be the collapse of everything that's why they come to this agreement yeah that's to save the system for themselves in some light and it was and it and it worked but they've been trying to pick at it ever since these people but yeah what have we got to one second one second one second one second we got to and since we desire that they shall be enjoyed in their entirety with lasting strength forever, we give and grant to the barons the following, the following security. The barons shall elect 25 of their number to keep and cause to be observed with all their might. Peace and liberties. Yeah. So this is their, they, they, they are, this is their job. Yeah. And it must, uh, and cause to be observed with all their might, the peace and liberties granted and confirmed to them by his char. If we, our chief justice, our officials, or any of our servants offend in any respect against any man or transgress any of the articles of the peace or of the security, and the offence is made known to four of the said 25 barons. They shall come towards Orinoir, whatever that word is, absence from the kingdom of the Chief of Justice to declare it and claim immediate redress. Yeah? So once it, this is basically saying, if the people, if anyone has broken any of the articles of, you know, uh, that bit it just said, I'm not trying to I'm just jumping it up now. It's, it's self-explanatory, isn't it? I mean, I'll read it out again. That makes more sense to me. Uh, I'll get a cut. The peace and liberties granted confirmed to them by this part. Okay. The 
transgress any of the articles of the peace or of the spirit and the physical law. If we or in our absence of war, the Chief Justice make no redress within 40 days, reckoning from the day on which the offence was declared. Bands refer the matter to the rest of the 25 bands who made this drain upon and assail us in every way possible with the support of the whole community of the land by seizing our castles that would be the houses of parliament in this day and age, I guess. Lands, possessions that would be all their mansions, all their holiday homes, or anything else saving only our own person and those of the queen. Yeah, it's so basically saying that the people. This is saying here that should our rights be broken, breached, and any transgression upon them be made, and should us informing them, which is what a protest is, that's everyone saying we're pissed off, you've violated your own the bargain, and when there's more than four witness it, they have 40 days to redress it, but especially when they're put on notice, when they've been given formal notice, which they have been, the people are making their cases. They've got 40 days to fucking make redress to the people to make sure that fucking peace is restored to the land. This is the basics of it all. As soon as when they've not done their duties, yeah, they're saying that we, the people, this is what he's saying here, yeah, in the Manukar, Article 61, should them have not given us redress after 40 days of being put on notice, says here. With the support of the whole community of the land, yeah, that we made by seizing of castles, lands, possessions, or anything else, saving only our own person and those of the queen and our children. This is fair enough. A saying that everything else can be seized by all people collectively if it's done peacefully. We're not causing them harm, that's the lawful, that's what lawful rebellion is. But that's on them to give us redress, just make the people happy with it again, so we can be in the uh, fucked up agreement that we were agreed we were in to begin with. Really, I'd say we peaceful anarchy or algo, what's it called, agorists. Yeah, they call it the peace principle, or whatever the fuck it's called, I don't know. Fucking do cause no harm principle, basically. Other than that, we're all of our own sovereign people doing our own thing. We do what we want. No man can tell another man, and that includes women. Man is a uh, woman, the best man. Mankind. Man is short for mankind. Yeah? All this, oh, should, should say women. I've, I've always looked at it, at it as man of a womb. That's what that's why I look for the womb. Womb man. Really, the boat is both. Man covers mankind, that's mankind, yeah. That's a, that's a, because a, a, a one man is a man. Mankind, yeah. Anyway. That bit there, that's what it says. I'm going my throat. Alright, peace out, one love.